Hi boys and girls, this is Mrs. Nichols. Today we are going to be learning about Carl Orff, a um, composer who wrote o, o Fortuna from Carmina Burana. We're also going to be uh, following along to a listing map of O Fortuna. And Carmina Burana is an opera, but we are going to learn more about this piece and this um, composer from Luigi's Baton. He loves to tell a good story, so follow along. Uh, you'll have the story right in front of you as this plays. There we go. Enjoy. for attack. Come on, orchestra, attack for me. Attacka! And, and singers, do not hold back. Attacka! For the love of Orf! Attacka! Uh, oh, uh, sorry, maestro. You're right, I guess. I, I did get a little carried away. I just get so passionate about this incredible piece of music. Carmina Burana, composed by the one and only Carl Orf. Oh, he's one of my favorites. <laughs> it's a cantata. Yes, indeed it is. Do you know what a cantata is? Of course you do, Maestro Luigi. You're a world-famous conductor with an equally famous baton. But do our listeners know? Oh, they know too? <laughs> they speak Italian, don't they? <laughs> cantata. Say it, everybody. Cantata. Cantata. Ah, bellissimo. You do speak Italian. Cantata comes from the Italian word cantare, which means sung or singing. A cantata is a musical work that has singers and instruments, conductor, and, most of all, baton, working together to create something very special. Yes, maestro, today we get to conduct not only a huge orchestra family, but a big choir, too. Ladies and gentlemen, we present... Oh, Fortuna, from the cantata Carmina Burana by Carl Orff. Attacka, maestro, attacka! All right, so we're going to learn some composer fun facts. So, Carl Orff was born in 1895, and he died in 1982. He was born in Munich, Germany. He wrote and staged puppet shows in his youth, writing music for piano, violin, zither, and glockenspiel to accompany his programs, which he performed for his family. So if you are interested in music or the arts, the first thing that we start doing is pretending at home. We play our instruments for our families or we learn from our families, uh, but they're our best audience to begin with. <laughs> so he also liked to collect insects in his spare time. That that's kind of strange. He had several of his compositions published by the time he was 16 years old. He co-developed a method of teaching music to children called the Orff Schoolwork Method, which means schoolwork in German. We use his instruments in class sometimes when we use the glockenspiels, uh, the metallophones, and the wooden xylophones. So that, that's uh, the type of music that he was developing. He used percussion instruments such as the xylophone, marimba, glockenspiel, and metallophone to teach music to children. These instruments came to be known as ORF instruments. You may, we do have some of these instruments in our classroom. So um, I'm going to switch over to our listing map. And here at our listing map, uh, it's called ORF o Fortuna from Carmina Burana. As you listen, follow the direction of the melody. We're going to point to the shapes as they move from high to low. The song actually starts with these kettlebell drum, uh, kettle drums, or uh, we also call them timpani. So you're going to be able to hear uh, the kettlebell drums. It's, so the, the map starts right here and not down here. So we're going to start with the timpani and the they're showing a picture of the choir because the choir is singing behind the the uh, instruments and so it's a very powerful song and you're going to enjoy it. And I'm sure you've heard of this song. I'm sure you've heard this song somewhere at some time. They usually play it for like uh, anticipatory kind of movies um, uh, those those movies that that make you wait and keep you suspenseful movies. There you go. So 
enjoy while you listen to our O Fortuna and please follow along. <laughs> Fortuna by uh, Carl Orff. So in this listening map, we started with the choir being double forte, fortissimo, and they were fortissimo throughout the beginning until this um, bird's eye or fermata, which means to hold out the note longer. After that, they went to pianissimo, which is double piano, and it was pretty soft. So they repeated this theme about three times. The second um, part is still pianissimo, and it just seems like a, the same pattern over and over again, correct? But in the third section, we have double forte, and this is the climax of the song leading up to the resolution where the sun is. So that was pretty exciting. Um, <clears throat> Did you, when you listen to this song, did you hear a bright, did you think bright thoughts or did you think dark thoughts? And I'm just asking because like in a color scheme, would this be a yellow or a dark blue? So it, it kind of forms patterns and it brings out emotions. So it sounds darker is usually in a minor key, whereas a brighter colored piece would mean that it is in a major key. I hope you enjoyed this listening map. I love listening maps. And we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>